Hey everybody, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to have a look at the new Wacom One. It's an affordable pen display. So we're going to take it out of the box, set it up and have a look at it. Now one of the things that's interesting about this is if any of you know the brand Wacom, they're you know, pretty much industry standard for all the professionals. One of the problems though has been affordability. So right now we have a pen display for $400. This is an entry level pen display. It's a one, it's not a Cintiq, which means there's a couple of little differences, but let's pull out of the box and we'll talk about it right now. So the first thing we wanna do is just, just pop this open. All right, now unboxing is almost like an art because <laughs> there's an art the way they package things these days. So we just pop this open. Looks like we've got a nice little cloth display here. We've got a little cloth bag here that snugly fits the display. Let's push it off to the side. It's not too heavy. And here we have the pen also enclosed in a cloth. And if we lift this flap, we can see everything else we need is in here. It's actually attached. So we've got the cables that come out. And here we have the documentation. And our power brick. Okay, let's have a look at the tablet itself. I feel there's a loop there, so we just pull that out. And there we go, there's a display. Feels quite nicely built has uh, plastic on the back and feet that fold out. And I'm looking under the feet there, I notice that there's spare nibs right there hiding underneath those feet. So we could have it down like that at a tilt angle, nice and comfortable for drawing. Okay, build quality feels good. It's an anti-reflective screen. Feels solid, not too heavy. And of course we've got this little loop here for putting the pan in. And let's have a look at the pans. Okay, so let's pull the pen out. This is a pen one. So this is a Wacom one pen. Feels a little bit lighter compared to a Cintiq pen. In fact, if we compare it to a Pro pen, you can see it's a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller. Weight wise, it's a little bit lighter. This uses the Wacom EMR technology, which is electromagnetic resonance, which means that there's no battery in the pen. You don't have to plug it in, there's no cable you never have to charge it. What happens is it actually, underneath the panel here, there's lots and lots of little emitters and they emit an electromagnetic signal that rises about five millimeters above the surface. So that means when the pen comes into contact with it, it recognizes the pen and gives a very accurate signal. Now this technology is what makes Wacom kind of head and shoulders above everybody else. I've used other ones, you know, like the Apple Pencil has to be charged, the Microsoft Surface, the pressure sensitivity is not that great on the bottom. But here's the thing, this is the technology that Wacom uses, which is also used uh, by Samsung user in their Note tablets and some other vendors use it. And because of that, there's also support for some third party pens. The list of course is on the Wacom site, but also includes the Statler Norris. And I'm a huge fan of Statler as far as pencils, they're my favorite brand. So let's just pop this out and we're also gonna have a look at this. So it actually looks a lot like one of the pencils. Actually feels like wood. And there's a tip on the end here, which is uh, an EMR tip. And we're gonna try it out and see how that feels as well. And as far as specs, this is a 13.3 inch screen. It has 72% of NTSC color space. It's at a 1920 by 1080 resolution, which is full HD. And the pressure sensitivity here is 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. That's about half of what we're getting right now in the Pro Cintiq lines. But trust me, I've been using these since they were 1,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and 4,096 levels is gonna be plenty for, I would say, pretty much everybody. Okay, so it's got this nice surface, but why don't we set it up before we try it out here? So I see we have a loom. And if we look at this loom here, it's got this nice uh, tie here, keep the cables nice and tidy. Um, Pete, if you're watching, you'll be really happy. Good uh, cable management. And one of the things that Wacom's known for is having generous length to the cables, which is nice. 
So this way you could plug this into your desktop, you could plug it into your laptop. So it works on Windows and Mac, and for the first time, it also works on some Android devices. So I check out the compatibility right now on the website when I last checked. It was mostly Samsung and Huawei products that were compatible. So to work, what it needs is a USB-A type and a HDMI outlet. So I'm going to use the MacBook Pro. And of course, you know, they have the dongles, but I have the MacBook Pro dongle here, which has an HDMI out and it has a USB-A out. So I can just plug this in now to one single USB-C connection and we should be good to go. Let's have a look underneath and this is where it's nice to keep the bag so you can put it down here and you're not damaging the surface. I can see I've got an outlet here. One of these goes to the USB-A, which just goes to power. And this can get quite a way away from our Wacom tablet. And then we just have a single cable here that's connecting by USB-C into the back there. And that plugs in. One thing worth noting is this plug notice that goes into the vertical, which I wish all plugs would do instead of being fat and taking up space. This way it just takes up one slot on a power board. We'll see there's a switch there. Just tap that switch, it comes on, it's saying Wacom right now. And it's connecting, I can see right out of the box, it's mirroring my screen, very nice. And on the card here, it says Wacom.com forward slash download to install the driver. So let's go and do that right now. Wacom.com forward slash download. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the Mac driver. Now, of course, you could download the Windows driver. So if you move this over the surface, we can start to see it moving, you know, before we even touch. If you tap, that's the equivalent of a mouse click. There's a single button on here. If you click that, it's the equivalent of a right click. And if you register your Wacom pen, you're going to get a bundle of free software, which is going to include Clip Studio Paint, a painting software, bamboo paper, drawing software. You get two months of Adobe Premiere Rush, which enables you to edit video. And then coming very soon, you're going to get six months of Adobe Fresco, which is the new Adobe painting and drawing app. So let's have a look at the basic setup right here. The first thing we're going to do is we want to calibrate. So let's just go down into the system preferences. We're going to choose Wacom tablet. And you can see here we've got the Wacom one pen display running. So let's click calibration and we're going to choose to calibrate. And then what we do is we just tap each of the corners. And what this is doing is it's setting the parallax. So whatever angle you're looking at, your pen is going to line up with where you're looking. And we can see we can change the pen right now. It's set to right click. We could change it to keyboard shortcuts. There's a lot of other things. We could even do on-screen displays here. Uh, things like express menus, which enable us to put different things in here are kind of useful. So if we tap on that, we get this menu, which we can, you know, put a keyboard in there. There's all kinds of different things we can program with that. And here's where we go under here, under the on-screen controls. We can have each one of these little segments, these little pie segments here. We can program them to do different things. So we could have different keyboard shortcuts or different tasks. So it means you could sit back and you could paint and not even need to have a keyboard there. You could use this. All right, so let's have a look and load this up into Photoshop though and see how this feels. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. And right now I'm looking at the Photoshop application. So I'm looking at this, I can see it fine. It's not as bright as maybe a Cintiq display. So as far as glare, I'm not catching any sharp glare because of the matte finish on here. I am seeing a little bit of, you know, kind of glare coming through from the lights because of course I have studio lights in here, which is brighter than most people would be encountering. So I don't really see any problems, you know, working with this, you know, in your studio, coffee shop, something like that. Seems like it's going to be bright enough. As far as navigating, this seems to work quite well. Uh, let's go under here. We can just do some basic adjustments. So I'm just in camera raw. Now there is no touch on here, so you can't accidentally bump it. So there's no palm rejection needed. It's just the pen that interacts. And we will try the other pen in a second. So I'm just kind of just making some quick adjustments here. Maybe warm that up a little bit. There we go, it looks better. Give it a little texture. And why don't I grab the localized adjustment brush here since I'm working on a pen. And I'm just gonna use the keyboard and why don't we reset this? 
And I'm just going to brighten up the exposure a little bit. And we're just going to paint in here. Okay, why don't we put on... Let's go down here. We're going to choose Auto Mask so we don't go outside of the boundaries. Now, I am using the keyboard shortcuts here on my keyboard. Um, mainly because, you know, there are no express keys or touch strips on here like you would get on the Cintiq Professionals or the Cintiq. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a little bit of photo retouching quickly and then we're going to see what it's like for sketching. It's the obvious thing. We're going to create a new layer. Put into overlay blending mode. And of course, you can set up the brush settings. So if we go under the brush, we've got brush settings over here. Where, of course, you know, we can set dynamics. So we could do, you know, for example, transfer. I want to set the opacity to pen pressure. So this gives you the full pen pressure experience. And that means if I push hard, I'm going to get more of an effect. And I press light, I'm going to get less of an effect. So I can blend this in and I can start to fade in my screen. Let's get a smaller brush. And now I'm just going to start painting in here. How does this feel? This feels nice. One of the things, if you're used to using a pen display or, you know, maybe you're coming from a tablet or you're coming from a phone, this is going to be a really nice experience for you. Personally, I prefer it over the Apple Pencil because this texture on here, it's not like you're skating. You know, one of the things I don't like about a lot of pens is it's a very hard surface and you're against a hard surface on the tablet and it just feels like it skates. There's no friction, no texture, and it just doesn't feel natural. Whereas this does, this feels a lot more natural, you know, kind of like, let's say it's like working on paper. It doesn't quite feel like paper to me, um, but pretty close. All right, so let's try this Statler pencil and see how this feels. Okay, this is definitely a softer tip. And kind of, I like the feel of that softer tip for some things here. It's actually quite nice. And pressure works fine, yeah. And let me just go back here. It's, it's a completely different feel there. I kind of like the Wacom pen for, you know, working with the accuracy, maybe for sketching. And then when it comes to shading, maybe using something like the Statler because it has a much softer uh, tip than the Wacom. Now, of course, we've got extra tips under there, as I mentioned before. So, you know what? This is looking pretty good. There's our before and there's after, just doing a little bit of dodging and burning. Now, one of the things, you know, that I've really got to say is, you know, if you've ever worked with a pen tablet, you know, I really love the feel of the pen tablet and use them all the time for retouching. Um, in fact, I don't know how people can use Photoshop for retouching without using some kind of pressure sensitivity. One of the nice things about drawing directly on the tablet, though, is it's a lot easier to get your hand-eye coordination. And to kind of test that, all you've got to do is just kind of try to write on here. It's very, it's very natural. That has a very natural feel. Now, try doing that on a pen tablet. It's, it's a lot harder to do that. So depending on your tasks, you know, if you really want to start working on screen, this is quite nice. And as far as retouching, I can see how it would definitely be useful. Let's have a look and see what it's like for sketching. So anyway, I apologize for this crude and distorted rendering. I should definitely take the time and do a better version of it where the proportions and stuff are correct. But anyway, um, using both these pens definitely get a different feel. Um, there's a softer feel with the Statler, which is nice. I feel it's kind of good for some of the larger areas, um, you know, for the shading. And then I kind of like the pen, the one pen here for some of the more detailed line art. Um, one of the things I haven't really been taking advantage of too much here is the tilt sensitivity because it also has tilt 
so I can thicken the brush as I tilt them. So anyway, I'm going to experiment, play around with these a little bit more and see if I can get some <laughs> much better renderings uh, for you guys to see. Okay, so my conclusion is if you're looking for that true Wacom experience and you want the pen tablet experience as well, and you don't have a lot of funds for $400, this is definitely a great way for you to get into this quality of working. So if you're coming from something like an iPad or phone, you've been drawing on this, you're going to find this is definitely a step up in the experience. The pen feels a lot more realistic. It's a nice size display. Um, the texture on there is really nice. It's definitely going to be a good experience for you. And also with the 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity, you can work inside the full Photoshop from your desktop, Mac or Windows, of course. Um, I think you're going to find this a good experience. If you have a little bit more of a budget, you know, I would definitely recommend stepping up maybe to the Cintiq line where you're going to have things like, you know, the express keys and touch strips. So you can change things like, you know, uh, brush size, rotation, zooming and those things uh, dynamically while you're working. And of course, if you're working professional and you've got a good budget, then the Wacom Cintiq Pro line is definitely the way to go because, you know, you've got on-screen on touch. Um, you've got over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and, you know, just that kind of accuracy with the nice gloss. So I have to say for $400, I believe this is really good value for money. I'm actually surprised that, you know, we have a Wacom screen for $400. This is something I just did not see coming a few years ago. So anyway, guys, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. What do you guys think about this? The Wacom One pen display, is it something you'd be interested in or are you already using a Wacom? Or are you using maybe a Cintiq already? Uh, let me know in the comments underneath. I'd love to see what you guys think about this. And anyway, guys, if you like these kind of reviews and you like Photoshop, definitely hit the subscribe button, become part of the Cafe Crew. You'll get a new tutorial from me and the occasional tech review uh, once a week. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the Cafe.